Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be painting this beautiful Swiss Alp scene using just two colours and also trying out a cheaper cotton paper, a £90 weight paper, so much lighter than my usual £140 paper to see whether or not it's, it's worth picking some up and using it or whether it's too light. Here's a quick preview. This is how it looked just when I started painting on it. You can see it's completely buckled and I had very little hope that it would flatten out. But as you can see here in the finished painting, it's tight as a drum and flat as a pancake. So this amazing cotton paper at 90 pounds weight is highly recommended. It's Saunders Waterford paper, which is one of my favourite brands. Um, it's cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 20 degrees. So gravity will help me with the painting. It's not pre-stretched and probably would be better to be pre-stretched at this weight. That will probably um, help it and keep it flatter as you paint. I've been inspired by this wonderful photograph that I found on Pixabay. I shall leave a link in the description below to the photograph um, and it's a royalty free photo all, all the photos are on Pixabay so check it out if you're interested. I'm going to paint the scene wet in wet using just two colours and the colours I'm going to use are indigo and lavender and I shall build up a base wash for the sky, the mountains, the snow and the village. So that's uh, my light value washes of lavender and indigo in to describe the sky, the mountains, uh, the darker village and then the lighter snow. And I'm just going to then use a slightly drier mix and a darker mix of indigo paint to paint in um, just a few trees while the paper is still damp. It's important that you don't use um, a wetter mix than your paper 
um, at this stage, otherwise you'll get cauliflower marks and run backs. So a drier mix of paint. And I must admit, it's been a bit of a struggle painting with the paper as buckled as it is. So even though um, I showed you that it completely flattens out at the end, I think if you're a beginner and you choose this paper, it's probably best not to use it for really wet in wet work like I did, unless you are prepared to sort of work around um, the contortions of the paper here. Uh, which as an experienced painter, I was able to do. So I think that's the only drawback for this paper um, from that point of view is that you have to sort of work with these very strong buckles. But that's only when you use it for very wet in wet work. And I really soaked the paper thoroughly first. So if you use less water, then you should find it fine to paint on with just a little bit of the buckling. So you can see I've got nearly all of my trees and they're softening and diffusing and it'll be really nice uh, once everything's completely dry to just sort of go in and um, add some crisper detail just to bring things together. I'm using a tissue here just to lift out a few areas on rooftops and things just to lighten things up slightly so that I can get my impression of snow on the rooftops. And then I shall use my palette knife to etch through the damp paint to create some texture and some interest and to also create a few winter trees and other details. And here, just before I leave it to dry, I'm, I'm giving you a close-up shot of how buckled it is. Um, but as I say, it does dry flat, so got to keep the faith um, and maybe not use as much water as I did if you paint on this paper. So I'm now going to leave it to dry completely and then we can come back when it's nice and dry and flat and put in some crisper detail. Oh, and a quick tip as well. Um, if your paper buckles as much as this, it's best to use patience and allow it to dry naturally. This allows the pores of the paper to sort of contract um, properly and fully. Whereas if you use an external heat source like a hairdryer to speed up the drying process, you can often be left with the cockles and buckles. So here it is, it's completely flat and completely dry and I must admit I wasn't expecting that. I thought I'd be left with at least a few sort of waves and ripples. But I'm very, very impressed. And I'm really pleased at the way these two colours are working together for this simple painting. And um, I'm now going to use um, a nice dark value of indigo 
um, and a small calligraphy brush and I'm going to carefully paint in some of the details to make the painting pop. The first thing and the most important is to get a nice finish, a nice crisp finish to the spire on the church. So I'm taking my time The church is the focal point with this beautiful steeple so or spire so I want to make sure that's right. The rest of the details should just be sort of like the supporting act <coughs> excuse me the supporting actors so to speak and if I just sort of paint around some of the buildings put shadow on some of the walls and add a few little windows here and there and then to add some darker um, value around the trees, around the lighter buildings, then that will make the buildings and the snow-topped roofs really stand out beautifully.
So that's um, the detail just about finished. At this stage of a painting, of course, you can add as much or as little as you like. Enough to bring it together is important, though, because all the washes before this stage um, were very soft and diffused and blurry and out of focus. And what we've done now by putting the focus around the church, the buildings and the trees and crisping up some of the detail and darkening and deepening the tones so that the contrast works and that the snow stands out more then we're pushing the mountains the blurry mountains back into the distance so i'm going to call that finished i think remove the tape and just have a look make sure it looks okay um, removing the tape lets us see it with fresh eyes and we can see whether there's anything or any adjustments that we need to make And I'm quite happy with that um, and I'm very happy with this paper and can thoroughly recommend it. So that's Saunders Waterford paper. Um, this is the cold pressed texture and it's £90 weight. So that's quite a lot lighter than my normal £140 paper. And even though it buckles a lot when I was painting it, it's dried back flat as a pancake and it's really taken the paint beautifully. The two colours I used for this limited palette painting were um, Holbein Lavender and Mimery Indigo. And I'm really pleased with the way those two colours have worked out for this subtle but quite sort of dramatic painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint that as much as I enjoyed painting it. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And think about maybe if you want to support the channel, then you can support us over on Patreon, either Morgana on her Patreon page or mine. And we'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy painting. Bye.